Hi, for this ANSYS tech tip, we'll discuss how to use computational fluid dynamics to design high performance mixing tanks. Mixing tanks are common in many industries, for example, chemical processing, pharma or biopharma industries, consumer goods, etc. And two common challenges exist when we want to design mixing tank. The first one is we want to ensure high efficiency and fast mixing. For that, we looked at blend time analysis. And the second one, especially in the pharma and biopharma industry, is we want to identify the optimum compromise between high and fast agitation rates and microorganism preservation. That is done doing an exposure time analysis. Now, CFD is actually key to develop those high performance mixing tank because computational free dynamics can give you key information on your design. And we have four examples here. If we look on the top left hand side corner, we can look at velocity vectors inside the tank. If we look at the bottom left hand side corner, we can get information like meso mixing time. But we can also do analysis like looking at the animation of the tracer in blending simulation where we're looking at an isosurface of a tracer and how it get mixed inside of the mixing tank. And last but not least, in exposure time analysis, we can also get information on the degree of shear rate encountered by biological cell. The graph on the right bottom hand side shows you a cumulative density function of the fraction of total time spent by a biological cell in a given shear rate environment. All information that are key to develop and design high performance mixing tanks. In the next seven minutes I will demonstrate to you that performing such a CFD analysis is not as complex as you may think. Now we start in NC's workbench and we activate the mixing template, which is extremely easy to install. Now we have a workflow that's already predefined for you with mixing analysis, blend time analysis and exposure time analysis simulation already set up for you. The only thing we have to do is actually define the geometry of the mixing tank. Once I defined the units, meter in this case, I will activate the mixing template. The first thing I will have to do is define the general characteristic of the mixing tank. We'll have two impellers, baffles, we'll have one probe and we'll have a sparger. We simply click apply. The next step is to define the tank parameters. We select the tank bottom type, here an ASME 10% bottom already pre-filled for you. We enter the tank dimensions, click create tank and as you can see without anything else to do the tank is automatically created. The next thing we'll do is define the parameters and the characteristic of the shaft. It can be top or bottom mounted, in this case it will be top mounted. We can choose its direction, dimension, location, orientation with the main axis of the tank, etc. etc. Same thing, once everything is filled in, we simply click on create shaft and as you can see in front of your eyes, the shaft is being created automatically. Next step, we define the impellers. A different type of impellers exist, we enter the dimension and as before we simply click create impeller and as you can see the impeller is created automatically. Now that's for one impeller and I will do the second impeller exactly the same uh, impeller dimension the and type the only thing is it will be placed in another location. Here we go, here is our second impeller that is put inside the geometry. As you can see again, very simple. Next step is to define the baffles. Here we're going to have beaver tails, baffles, we're going to have four of them and same thing, we enter some key dimension and simply click create baffles. Here are our four baffles. 
Next, we set up the probe, same ideas, enter the dimension and the location, click create probe. We're actually going to inspect our geometry and I'm just realizing that I didn't place the baffle at the right position. There must be a 25 centimeters offset with the x-axis, which I'm doing right now. Oh, I'm getting an error message. Actually, here, um, the template indicates that the location is not good and conflict with other geometry. Actually, the offset was in the negative direction. I change that, click Create Probe again, and here we go, automatically set up. Next thing is to set up the sparger. Same thing here. I have different options to create the sparger. I enter the dimension, location, and simply click Create Sparger. And here we have the full geometry. Now, solution parameters, what is the fluid density, viscosity, the agitation speeds, etc. Same thing, simply enter it and click Apply Solution Setting. Advanced setting, I'm going to run 2000 flow iteration. And last but not least, I don't want to re-enter everything every time. So I just set that as a default and I click Finalize Model. And you can see all the template extract the fluid volume, which is obviously the region where we will per be performing our combinational fluid analysis. That's done fully automatically, as you can see here. There's really nothing you need to do, and you can see that it's also extremely fast. And before you even know it, you will be able to see your fluid volume which is right here. And again, you can see all the details. You still have the baffle, the probe, the shaft, the impellers, the sparger, etc., etc. Very quick and easy to create the geometry. Now, to run the simulation, nothing to set up. Simply press or click Update Simulation. Now, at this time, the mixing analysis is complete. The blend time analysis is being performed and after that the exposure time analysis will be performed. Here's how it looks once everything is completed. We get check marks everywhere so we know all the simulation completed without any trouble. And what I want to show you now is actually how we can modify some parameters from the simulation to perform different simulation with different parameters. Now, there's a lot of parameters you can choose from, and actually to perform other simulations, very easy. Simply create another design point. Now, I will actually use the same tank level heights, but what I will do is I will actually change the agitation speed from 10 radians per second to 15. I want to know the result, I just click Update All Design Point. Here I did one extra design, but you can do as many design points as you wish. Now, what we want to do now, obviously, is look at the result. And there is no need to do your own post-processing, because everything is already available for you in an automatically created simulation report, where you have information like meso mixing time, you can check your residual to make sure your simulation is well converged. And here again, the animation of the tracer blending that we saw at the beginning of the presentation. So really an easy way for you to look at the performance of your design. Now, some of you may be saying, wait, I actually would love to use this geometry, but I want to do a more advanced simulation, multi-phase flow, for example. It's very simple. You actually take a fluent uh, cell simulation, connect it to the geometry that was already defined, and open fluent like with any other simulation. I'm going to use double precision, going to use four processor for this simulation and you will see that as Fluent opens the mesh from our geometry is directly imported. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you found this tech tip useful.